Hi friends, welcome to my channel once again. Today we are discussing the concept of working capital in financial management. Working capital is the fund required for the day-to-day -day operations of the business. And the working capital is defined as the difference between the current assets and current liabilities. So as an equation we may write, working capital is equal to current asset minus current liability. In order to understand the working capital better, you should first understand what is a current asset and what is a current liability. An asset is said to be current when it is expected to be realized or intends to be sold or consumed in the normal operating cycle. So the sundry debtors needs to be realized in the normal operating cycle, the finished good be sold in the normal operating cycle and the raw material is to be consumed in the normal operating cycle. The second condition, the asset is primarily held for the purpose of trading. The third one, it is expected to be realized within 12 months after the reporting period. It is non-restricted cash or cash equivalent. Restricted cash means in case some amount is earmarked for some other purpose and it is not available in the usual business purpose is called a restricted cash. That cash is not taken as a current asset. So these are the four conditions and asset, when these four conditions are satisfied an asset is called a current asset. Components of current assets is as follows 1. Inventory 2. Receivables 3. Cash and cash equivalents 4. Prepaid expenses The inventory can be again subdivided into raw material, work in progress and finished goods. Current liability is also defined in the same way. Here an asset is to be a current liability, it is to be expected to be settled in the normal operating cycle. The liability is held primarily for the purpose of trade and it is expected to be settled within 12 months. And the main components of current assets, uh, current liabilities are payables, that is trade payables, creditors and outstanding payments, salary or wages. Working capital can be divided on the basis of value. It is uh, gross working capital and net working capital. Gross working capital means the investment in the current assets alone. And the net working capital means the difference between the current assets and the current liability or the net investment in the business. Working capital can again be divided on the basis of time, permanent working capital and fluctuating working capital. Permanent working capital is the basic minimum working capital required at all time and fluctuating working capital or temporary working capital is the additional working capital required. This is the variable working capital used to finance the short term working capital requirement due to the fluctuation in the sales. Now let us check what is the significance of working capital. Large amount of working capital means the company have ideal funds. Ideal funds has a cost. Every fund has a cost as we studied in the cost of capital. So company needs to pay more interest and it leads to the low. And in case the company has inadequate working capital, company may not be able to meet its liabilities in time. So there is a risk of insolvency. If we are not able to pay in time, the creditors may not extend the credit and it will further deteriorate the working capital position of the company. So it is a very dangerous situation. Adequacy of the working capital is traditionally assessed by the current ratio and QQ ratio. QQ ratio is also called as liquid ratio or asset trust ratio. Current ratio is defined as current asset divided by current liability and the liquid ratio is defined as current asset minus stock or inventory divided by current liabilities. Traditionally a current ratio of 2 and a liquid ratio of 1 is termed as adequate for a manufacturing company but this is only an indicational ratio it depends on the demand of the product if the finished goods are readily saleable and no need of giving long credit period so a company can comfortably work with a lesser current ratio the two and one is given as only an indicational ratios working capital management means plan and compute the requirement of the working capital and finding the means and ways of financing the working capital now let us discuss what are all the factors need to be considered while determining the working capital requirement. First one is the cash. We need to identify the amount of cash which required for the day to day business or the smooth functioning of the business. But keep in mind that excess cash holding will increase the cost. 
inventory we need to keep inventory for the uninterrupted production of the goods but too much of inventory is again increase the cost we can use the technique like just in time and economic order quantity for reducing the cost on inventory receivables it is generally accepted that the increase in the credit terms will increase the sales but the increase in the sale again increase the cost of the receivables or the investment in the receivables so the additional sale the benefit from the additional sale we have to compare with the cost of the investment in additional debtors so we have to take a decision based on the increase in sale and increase in the cost of receivables for short term financing option the best option for financing the current asset is the credit from the suppliers but normally it will not be sufficient then we need to borrow from bank or resort to technique like factoring for immediately converting the debtors to cash for financing our working capital five nature of the business nature of the business has a say on the working capital position of the company business like restaurant or film or cinema theater is the where the sale is all for cash no need of a big amount of working capital six market and demand conditions if the demand of the products of the company is high then the requirement of the current asset will be very low because the we need not keep the finished goods for a long time or we need not give credit period so there will be not much investment in the finished goods and in the debtors so the current asset will be very less manufacturing policies may affect the working capital it is very evident in the seasonal business the seasonal business can either decide to produce throughout the year or only during the peak periods if we are producing throughout the year the investment in the finished goods will be very high and we need more working capital but the problem with the production in the peak period is that we may not be able to retain the efficient staff or the skilled staff eight operating efficiency if the company is operating efficiently we can reduce the working capital requirement by reducing or eliminating the waste and improving the coordination etc nine price level changes if the prices is on the increasing trend we need more working capital for the same amount of or same quantity of production for example if the raw material prices increases from 50 to 55 if we are keeping 1000 numbers the our investment will increase from 50000 to 55000 without increasing the level of activity expansion of the business activity needs additional stock of raw material work in progress and finished goods debtors will be will be also on the increasing side as the sales will increase as we discussed earlier the working capital management is a choice between liquidity and profitability too much liquidity will lead to less profit and less liquidity may lead to the insolvency so it is a very critical decision as far as the business is concerned again the working capital policy is a function of two decisions that is the investment decisions and the financing decision investment decision means how much amount is to be invested in the current assets and the financing decision is where from this investment is to be supported or where from the money will come for investing in the current assets there are three different approaches in the investment in working capital first one is the aggressive here the investment in working capital is minimum we hold less inventory strict credit policy and low cash balance advantage being less fund invested in business financial cost will be less and it will improve the profitability but the growth will be low due to the strict credit period and the utilization of the fixed asset and the long term debts will be low the company may not be able to cope up with the competitors the second approach is the conservative approach here high level of inventory we are keeping and the liberal credit policy we are following and high cash balance we are keeping to meet any contingency this may result in high sale due to the long credit period and goodwill of the company will be high as the due or prompt payment to the creditors disadvantage is the increased cost high risk of bad debt and longer operating cycle third approach is the moderate approach as the name indicates it is a way in between the aggressive and the conservative combining the good characteristic of both now we will come to the concept called working capital cycle or operating cycle it is the most important concept in the working capital management working capital cycle indicates the length of time between a company paying for materials entering into stock producing the goods selling the goods and collecting money from the debtors 
So it is essentially the time between the company paying out the money and the money coming back to the business. Working capital cycle is the length of time and expressed in days and not in amount. It is the number of days taken. Working capital cycle can be calculated by the formula. Working capital cycle is equal to R plus W plus F plus D minus C where R is the raw material storage period, W is the working progress holding period, F is the finished goods storage period, D is the receivables collection period and C is the credit period allowed by the suppliers. Now let us check what is the logic behind this formula. Let us assume that a company is purchasing some raw material today. So there is already some raw material in the warehouse of the company. So the new raw material purchase will wait for some time to be transferred to the production process. And again it will stay sometimes in the production process also. After that it will become the finished goods. The finished goods will wait for sale. After sale it will take some time to receive the collection from the debtors. So these all periods should be added to find out the length of time to find out the working capital cycle. The creditors will allow some credit period so we can reduce that credit period because the paying of the money is deferred from the purchase of the material. So the credit period we can reduce from the formula. Now let us check how to find out the individual components of this formula. First the raw material storage period. Raw material storage period can be found out by dividing the average stock of raw material by average consumption per day. The raw material purchased today will be used only after finishing the raw material already existing in the warehouse. How many days it will take the existing raw material to be finished is the raw material storage period. Because we can find out how many days the goods will lie in the work in progress by dividing average work in progress inventory with average cost of production per day. Same is the case with the finished goods. Today some goods will become finished goods from work in progress but there will be already some finished goods in the storage. So these finished goods should be sold before the finished goods made today will be sold. The waiting time of the finished goods can be found out by dividing average stock of finished goods by average cost of goods sold per day. Detest collection period means how many days sales is outstanding for collection. This can be found out by average receivables divided by average credit sales per day. Credit period allowed by the suppliers means how many days purchase is outstanding for payment. This can be found out by dividing average payables by average credit purchase per day. Now let us do one problem for a clear understanding of the operating cycle or working capital cycle. Following is the information forecasted by the Pooja Limited for the year ending 31st March 2018. Balance as at 1st for April 2017 and balance as at 31st March 2018. Raw material Rs 45,000, 65,356. Work in progress 35,000, 51,300. Finished goods 60,181, 70,175. Debt is 1,12,123 and 1,35,000. Credit is 50,079 and 70,469. Annual purchase of raw material, all credit, 4 lakh rupees. Annual cost of production, 7 lakh 50,000. Annual cost of goods sold, 9 lakh 15,000. Annual sales, all credit, 11 lakh. Annual operating cost, 9 lakh 50,000. You may take one year as equal to 365 days. Required, calculate. Net operating cycle period to number of operating cycle in a year. Working capital cycle or operating cycle is equal to R which is the raw material storage period plus W work in progress holding period plus G finished goods storage period plus D that is collection period minus credit is payment period. Now let us see how we find out the R. Raw material storage period is the amount of or the length of time the raw material is staying in the warehouse waiting for to be transferred to the production process. This we can find out by average raw material divided by daily consumption. Average raw material is not directly given but the opening stock and the closing stock is given. So opening stock plus closing stock divided by 2 will give you the average raw material. Daily consumption we can find out by 
the annual consumption divided by 365 so you will get the daily consumption opening stock of raw material is 45,000 and closing stock of raw material is 65,365 so the average is 45,000 plus 65,365 65, divided by 2 and the annual consumption is not directly given but we know the formula to find out the annual consumption that is opening stock plus purchase minus closing stock that is 45,000 plus 4 lakh minus 65,365 which will give you 3 lakh 79,644 that is to be divided by 365 to find out the daily consumption so the your answer will be 53 days now let us find out what is the work in progress conversion period the formula being average stock of work in progress divided by average cost of production per day the opening stock of work in progress is given as 35,000 and closing stock is given as 51,300 and the cost of production for the year is 750,000 divided by 365 will give you per day cost of production by solving the above equation we will get the answer as 21 days Finished goods storage period can be found out by dividing the cost of average stock of finished goods by cost of goods sold per day. Opening stock of finished goods is 60,181 and closing stock is 70,175. So divided by 2 you will get the average stock and 9,15,000 is the cost of goods sold per year. So divided by 365 you will get cost of goods sold per day. By solving the above equation we will get the answer as 26 days. The test collection period can be found out by dividing the average receivables by credit sales per day. This means how many days sales was outstanding to be collected. Here by dividing the average receivables by the credit sales per day we will get as 41 days. This means today's sale will be collected only after 41 days. Credit test payment period can be found out by dividing the average credit test by credit purchase per day this indicates that how many days purchase is outstanding on a particular day here the average credit is 50,079 plus 70,469 divided by 2 and the total credit purchase for the year is 4 lakh divided by 365 you will get the daily purchase by solving we will get the credit period as 55 days from the above, we can found that the operating cycle period is equal to R plus W plus F plus D minus C is equal to 53 plus 21 plus 26 plus 41 minus 55 that is equal to 86 days. This means the raw material we purchase will remain as raw material for 53 days then it will transfer to the work in progress and it will remain there for 21 days and it will be in the warehouse as finished goods for 26 days and that is will take 41 days to pay. This is the total is 141 days but as we discussed earlier the creditors we will pay to the creditors only after 50, 55 days of purchase so the operating cycle period is starting from the date of payment and not from the date of purchase so from 141 we can detect that 55 days the delay in the payment so we will reach the operating cycle period as 86 days now let us check what is the importance of the operating cycle period operating cycle period 86 means whatever money we are investing today will come back only after 86 days so if the operating cycle period is long we need to invest money for the for that much period so here we need to uh, invest in the business for 86 days continuously to run the business only from the 87th day we can use the money which is coming back so if we are able to reduce any of the raw material storage period or work in progress period finished good storage period or debtors collection period or we can increase the creditors period the operating cycle period will come down if the operating cycle period will come down the our investment in the uh, current asset also will come down that is the significance of operating cycle period now let us find out what is the number of operating cycle in a year number of operating cycle can be found out by dividing 365 days by operating cycle period that is 86 we will get the answer as 4.244 this means whatever money we have we can do 4.244 times of business in a year if the operating cycle is more with the small amount of money we can do more business